Hello everyone and welcome to Sinful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today's video, we're going to talk stuck clicking Warhammer 40,000 with just three box sets. And the army we're going to focus on today are the elite of the elite, the A-team of Space Marines, the Death Watch. Now, the Death Watch are one of my favorite factions in Warhammer 40k. I absolutely love the idea of combining all the different Space Marines to bring the Auto Xenos together and create these amazing kill teams. Now, in this video, we're going to go through the Combat Patrol box set, the Boarding Patrol box set for Space Marines, and the Redemptor Dreadnought box set, and talk about how we can create a Death Watch army using just these three box sets for a thousand points at the end of the video. Now, in this as well, we are going to talk a little bit as well about how we can bring them into different kill teams, what all these units sort of do in each of the box sets as well, before, like I said, showing that little sample army list at the end of the video. And so to start with the Death Watch Combat Patrol box set, this has a Primaris Lieutenant in there with Power Sword and a Bolt Pistol. Um, this is a cool model, it can just give you a nice little reroll wound buff around to friendly core units, which is cool. Uh, other than that, you know, it is a secondary type of character for you. It is a HQ slot, but you can actually include two Primaris Lieutenants in the same HQ slot if you wish to do so. The other character model we have inside this box set is an Elite's Choice and is the Primaris Apothecary. These models, as you might expect with the Apothecaries, they are all about keeping your other Space Marines alive. So they've got Combat Resterers, where at the end of the movement phase, if this model is within range of 3 inch of a Death Watch Infantry or Death Watch Biker model whose unit is within 3 inch, the model can regain up to D3 lost wounds and each model can only be healed once per turn. On top of that, the Narthesium Aura, while a friendly Death Watch Infantry or Biker unit is within 3 inch of this model, each time a model and unit would lose a wound, on a 6, the wound's not lost as well. Other than that, it's got his Absolver Bolt Pistol, which is a Strength 5 Bolt Pistol, which is really cool. Minus 1 AP damage too, so good against other Space Marines. Um, but all in all, is really there just to bring some nice support to your force. Now, the first unit we have here are the Intercessors. The Intercessors are your standard sort of Primaris Marine troops. Now, what's cool about Death Watch is they can be put into a variety of different kill teams. Normally, you're going to find your Intercessors joining a Fortis kill team, though you can take them as regular intercessor squads as well if you want to. They can mix and match their weapons freely inside the kill teams, choosing between either the Stalker Bolters, which will have a longer range, less shots, but generally a more powerful shot, or you can go with something like the Auto Bolt Rifles, which are going to be the more uh, assault-based weapons, more shots, less powerful, and a shorter range. You can also take a status grenade launches in the unit as well, and the sergeant can be equipped with a variety of different combat and pistol weapons as well. Lastly, we have the aggressors, and these models are generally going to be found in a Proteus kill team, uh, or you can take them as regular aggressor squads if you so wish to. Um, but they have two main options. You can either go for the Flamestorm Gauntlets, which are going to provide you with two nice flamer weapons and some power fist quality weapons in close combat. Or you can go with the Bolt Storm Gauntlets, which also will give you the Frag Storm Grenade Launchers for a nice and decent shooting unit at a more middling range rather than the shorter range of the Flamers. They're a decent combat unit. They're in Gravis Armor as well, so they've got that nice plus one toughness on them as well. And so then we have the Space Marines Boarding Patrol box set. Now this box set isn't a Death Watch specific box set. If you're looking for it on Warhammer Community or on the Games Workshop website or on an independent retailer, you are going to need to search Space Marine Boarding Patrol box set and that's what it's called. Uh, now this box set first of all contains a Captain in Gravis armor. Your Gravis armor is pretty cool. It gives you plus one toughness as it's really big benefit. So you're going to have that nice toughness five. You've also got the Bolt Storm Gauntlet built in there as well, which is a power fist type weapon in close combat. So times two strength. And it also has a nice little pistol weapon on top as well. Now, the cool thing about the Captain Gravis armor is it's got the Gravis fighting style where he, if he has a chainsaw, will get plus two attacks, which stacks with the chainsaw's ability of giving the model plus one attack already so you get plus three attacks with that chain sword you can have a power sword to get plus two attacks or you can have a power fist to get plus one attack note that the power fist bonus does not work on the gravis armor's bolt storm gauntlet even though i guess it is technically a power fist it doesn't count as that it's bolt storm gauntlet not a power fist now this model also provides you with some nice auras as well giving you the reroll to hit within six inch of him as well for friendly core units now we then have the Assault Intercessors and Death Watch. These can be built into a few of the different kill teams. Uh, the main one you're going to find them in is going to be the Fortis kill team, uh, but they can also be taken as 
just your assault intercessors if you wish to do so as well. Um, they have chainswords and bolt pistols as standard. Their sergeants can be equipped with a variety of different special weapons, uh, either from the pistol weapons list or the melee weapons list. The other one unit we have are the heavy intercessors, and much like the regular intercessors, they do have three different types of weapons you can take. You can either take a longer range, less shot, more powerful gun, uh, the standard size mid-range gun with middling power, or you can take the least strong gun, but you get a shorter range, but you will get more shots with it, and it will become an assault weapon as well. On top of that, for every five models in the unit, you can take a heavy bolter, which also will have various different profiles as well, based on what you want to do. More shots, less shots, more powerful, less powerful, etc. Now, your heavy intercessors can be taken in a Proteus kill team, which is really cool. Uh, this will just allow them to combine with some of the other heavy units you're able to bring into your force and provide a nice sort of heavy infantry tank hunting sort of kill team. And so lastly, we are going to talk about the Redemptor Dreadnought. For me, this is the best vehicle Space Marines have access to, maybe, I guess, nowadays uh, competing with the Brutalis Dreadnought, which could certainly be a valid option here if you want. You really could go either of the options. But I think Deathwatch definitely do benefit from having a decent shooting potential to all their models. Uh, so that's why I like the Redemptor. Now, the Redemptor has the Dreadnought's rule where it's just minus one damage to be all attacks coming into it it also has a variety of different shooting weapons can have either a heavy flamer or onslaught gatling cannon underslung under that dreadnought power fist which is times two strength damage d3 plus three and it can choose its big gun to be either the macroplasma incinerator or a heavy onslaught gatling cannon both of which do provide different things macroplasma incinerator is generally a blast weapon and more powerful while you've got more shots coming out of that heavy version of the onslaught gatling cannon you can have the storm bolters on it as well uh, on its chest or you can have some nice little grenade launchers and you've also got the icarus rocket pod on its back as well which is an option you can always take for the dreadnought on top of that you do have access to some really cool stratagems namely the one that can make you pretty much count as a captain or lieutenant based on which option you're needing so you can provide some nice aura buffs to the rest of your force as well and so here we have our sample army list. We're going in an Arcs of Omen attachment. This means it just opens up the most options for building your army from this point onwards. Uh, we've gone for troops as our compulsory option. This gives us three troops choices required, but just opens up the rest of the list for us. Now to start with, we've gone with taking the Captain Gravis armor, who is going to be our Warlord. And his optimized priority aura as his Warlord trait is really cool. This just allows our units to still shoot, wipe off performing actions without the actions failing um, and then we've also got a relic on him called the beacon and jealous where we can teleport a unit around the table or that's in reserve nearby him which is just super super useful for, for some maneuvering ability especially since we are lacking any transports from these box sets though that's not always an issue especially on smaller board sizes like thousand point games that are supposed to be played on i don't think transports are the most important thing in the world other than that, we've gone the Stardust Chainsword. Really, it's up to you here, whether you like the Chainsword, Power Fist, or Power Sword. For me, I like the extra attacks, the Chainsword, or the Power Sword go with. Um, they are my two options. If I want a Power Fist, I'd rather sacrifice the extra attack and have the option for more attacks, because then get that Power Fist profile on the Bolt Storm Gauntlet. Our Primaris Lieutenant joins the force. He's got his Bolt Pistol and Mastercrafted Power Sword. And then we go into our troops, where we have three different kill teams. Now, the first of these is a Fortis kill team, which will contain five assault intercessors, an intercessor sergeant with power sword, an intercessor with a Stardust grenade launcher, and three intercessors with bolt rifles, and we've taken that twice. And then we've also given one of them the Dominatus kill team upgrade as well. This allows them to get extra bonuses when fighting, again, elite options, uh, getting them some nice little rerolls. So this can generally be a nice independent operating kill team. Meanwhile, we have a second Fortis kill team that does not have the Dominatus upgrade, um, but this will generally be walking around with one of our characters. And then we have the Indomita kill team as well with a bunch of aggressors, three of them. We've gone for one with Boltstorm grenade launches and the other one, the two with the Flamestorm gauntlets. Heavy Intercessor Sergeant with a Heavy Bolt Rifle, three Heavy Intercessors with Heavy Bolt Rifles, and a Heavy Intercessor with the Hellstorm Heavy Bolter as well. We then have our Elite, which will be the Apothecary, and the Redemptor Dreadnought with Fragstorm Grenade Launchers, Icarus Rocket Pod, Macroplasma Incinerator, 
Onslaught Gatling Cannon and that Redemptor Fist, of course. Like I said in the previous slide, you certainly could find the points here if you want to bring in the Brutalis. I think dropping the Dominatus uh, and dropping a few other options here and there, you can probably find the points to fit in that Brutalis Dreadnought if you want to. But this army is 62 power level, 995 points, 4 CP after we've spent 2 of our starting 6 on the Wall of Trait and Relic for the Force. If you've been playing with Deathwatch and you've got some ideas on how to build up a force with these particular box sets, or you've got an option you'd like to take instead of the Redemptor, let us know down in the comments below. And so that's the end of the video. We hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to come chat more with me and other members of our fantastic little community here, we have a Discord server which is linked down in the video's description. Also linked down in the video's description are the best ways to help support the channel. If you would like to, you can do so either by YouTube members or Patreon or by grabbing yourself some merch at Teespring or at our Kofi store. All of them are linked down in the video description. As a special thank you to our Patreons and YouTube members, we'd like to give you all a shout out. So thank you to our Patreons, Christian Weir, Soren, Kenny Lowe, Out on Shot First, Andrew Bowen, The Rising Ape, Cure Dynamic, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Domia, Mark Harvey, James Cater, Benjamin Swellers, Redman, Iron Grinch, Nicholas Colomos, Colorblind Magic, Grimscold, and Andy C. And to our YouTube members of Green Rich Gaming, Ronya, Lock Lorik, The Johnny84, David Ellsworth, Wolfric Nick, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, Revenar, Pink Nico Fire, Robin Mankiller, Monty's Tabletop Terrain, John Castle, Davis Weird, James Tillman, Gargamel196, and Disco. Lastly, a special thanks, first of all, to Lady Witchfox Art, who does all the amazing art with the channel, everyone who helps come and provide the games for everyone to watch on the channel as well, and indeed all our fantastic mods and members of the community who keep our Discord and comment section a fantastic place for all to be. Thank you all once again, everyone. Stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the grey. Ciao for now.